There are two things in the world of Warcraft that everybody undeniably needs to look better than the enemy and be better than the enemy. This is why mounts cut to the heart of the player experience, setting the scene for the type of player that you are whilst also showing off the achievements that make you better than your peers. For some people, simply looking cool is enough, and if that's you, check out our easiest rare raid mount videos you can get today right here. For the hardened mount collectors however, having the easy ones just isn't enough. Some of you will be driven to be the best and the quickest way to show that, well, they're on this list. What we are not doing here is putting these in any order though, as each challenge is unique in its difficulty. So, without further ado, here are the top 10 hardest mounts you can get in the world of Warcraft today. Enjoy the video, hit subscribe and let us know what your best mount is in the comments. If we get to 100 likes, we will list the 10 rarest mounts of all time. Enjoy. Number 10. The Gladiator Mount. Nothing makes world PvP players turn around and scram in panic like a series of rats more than an image of a Gladiator Mount jutting over the horizon. These signs of true skill introduced with Arena in the Burning Crusade use the base model of that expansion's iconic mount and notches them up to 11. This has included Proto Drakes, Neverwings, Soul Eaters and Twilight Dragons. The mounts are often striking for their unique level of detail in their respective patches. To get them, you're going to need 50 wins at 2400 rating, a feat that some pencil pushing nerds will tell you is easy. But let me tell you, as a 1700 Andy, this is no easy feat. These mounts have been even harder to get in the past, requiring you to be one of the top players on your realm, making them a true mark of skill. Skill. Number 9. The Cutting Edge Mount If Gladiator mounts represent the bleeding edge of PvP combat, it's fair to say that the Cutting Edge Endgame mounts represent a similar summit for PvE content. The first mount to drop from an end boss of Raid Tier was Ashes of Alar from Kael'thas during Tier 5 in the Burning Crusade. The format as it is known now though really solidified during Old War in the Raid's hard mode version of yogg -Saron, Alone in the Darkness. If the Gladiator mounts represent a souped up version of existing flying mount archetypes for that expansion, then the cutting edge mounts are often completely unique and different, obtained only by the absolute top tier of players. In Sanctum of Domination, we have the Vengeance Dragonhawk, a twisted incarnation of the multi-expansion model, but go to Enzoth or Argus to find some of the game's most prize-worthy mounts, or maybe even step into Northrend to check out Invincible, the crown jewel of most collections. To understand how hard these mounts are to get for the current tier, you have to look at how many guilds have access. As of writing, just 1300 guilds have killed Sylvanas, meaning that only 26,000 people have had the opportunity to get this, making it the sign of a true PvE hero. Number 9. The Prestigious Bloodforged Corsa So far it's fair to say that the difficulty has been a measure of skill, with a bit of luck and perseverance thrown in. The same cannot be said for the prestigious Bloodforge Corsa, a mount whose requirements are so lofty, it's almost like Blizzard wants to get us logging in every single day to keep our playtime high. Well, okay Blizzard you got me, because if I am nothing, it's a sucker for achievement points. This one is technically obtainable by anyone from Chimpanze to Chimpanzee. All you're going to need to do is around 2-3 to three years of an undying love for Battlegrounds logging in every day to play. You see, in Legion, we got Prestige, which then evolved into the BFA Honor system we have now. A grindy system that requires daily logins to get points when taking part in any PvP activity. 8000 XP results in a gained level. To get this mount however, you're going to need to hit level 500. That's 500. At an expected average of 25 honor per minute, you're looking at around 120 days of playtime to unlock this bad boy. Looks cool though. Number 7. The Frenzied Fell Talon. We are firmly back on the grind, this time to something that's perhaps a bit more up your street if you're watching this very video. The Frenzied Fell Talon is a reward for obtaining 400 mounts, a feat so gargantuan that it's only been completed by 1% of the player base. This achievement may be daunting and require a huge amount of luck every single day as you traverse the world killing dungeons and raids, battling it out in the arena, levelling up reputations and exploring the world. Perhaps there is no more beautiful way to take in the depth of the game than to collect every single steed available. The journey itself is more reward than this mount perhaps, but let's face it, 400 mounts down and you will probably have something infinitely cooler than this one. If you want to get serious about this, be prepared to plan. We suggest setting up a route through every dungeon and raid to minimise the time, and get multiple tunes set up outside of the relevant instances so that you can get into them and kill the bosses quicker. Number 6. The Pure Heart Corsa Another day, another grind. Please Blizzard, give us a break. An often undermentioned side of the game that adds a tremendous amount of depth is the reputation system. It's the backbone of how we interact patch on patch, adds a huge amount of flavour and sets the tone of an area. In recent expansions, Blizzard has nerfed the detail of rep grinds, opting instead for a more cookie cutter progression with nuance being baked into the systems of the zones. The Pure Heart Corsa is a freaking unicorn, obtained for hitting 100 exalted reputations. 
as of 9.1, that's basically every reputation in the game, from Ogrilla to Frenzy Heart, Tillers to Skyguard and more. This is not something that can be started easily today. One expansion's worth of reps can often take a whole year to hit Exalted, so 100 is nigh insurmountable task this far into the game. But for those of you who do want to tackle it, consider rolling a human and attacking Time Walking to grind up to some tasty tokens. Number 5. The Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent For what it's worth, Reputation and Honor Grinds put the onus 100% on the player to close their eyes and play the game for 4-5 to five years until all your friends leave you, your spouse pleads for you to stop talking about Altarak Valley. The Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent does not give you the same level of autonomy though. That's because this mount has a meagre 0.3% chance of dropping from the Shah of Anger in the Mist Zone, Kunlai Summit. The mark of a truly iconic mount is how many people are still there to get it to this day, and the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent still attracts crowds that would make the big man Chris Whitty wins. The Wowhead forums for this one are awash with people posting their kills with a small tear rolling down one cheek, and whilst this one may not be hard to get in the same way as some of the other mounts on this list, maybe spare a thought for those of us who are on our 300th try. Number 4. The Reigns of the Infinite Time Reaver Dancing to the same tune is the Reigns of the Infinite Time Reaver, a mount that is only available during time walking and has an even lower drop rate than the Onyx Serpent. Whilst it's completely farmable during time walking, to do so would be like spending a few hours every week going out of your way to play the lottery. It's as close to a 0% drop as you can get in the World of Warcraft. Compounding this pain is the fact that for most players, time walking is pretty boring. Certainly not as rewarding as it could be, but that's my gripe for another video. The mount looks sick, and one that makes its way onto most players who obtain its action bars. If you're serious about going for it, consider pairing it up with a reputation grind and levelling new characters who can also attempt the mounts above. Number 3. The Time Lost Proto Drake Some mounts are famous, others are infamous, and this late into Warcraft's history, it would be surprising if you didn't know about the Time Lost Proto Drake. Debuting in the Wrath of the Lich King, we here at Diana Boys remember the quiet, disconcerted whispers as people clocked on to the obscene difficulty of farming this mount. I actually spent multiple days of my 200 day playtime cruising around Storm Peaks in a manner similar to journeys around San Andreas looking for Bigfoot and Exmoor looking for the Exmoor Beast. That's a deep cut for our Devon fans. This mount is a guaranteed drop from the rare spawn of the same name, except this rare spawn doesn't have a set timer and is himself a rare spawn of another rare. In Wrath, not only did you have to be the first person to spot it, but you also had to then follow that up to be the first person to tag him, and at a time when the zone was home to the most popular and best raid of all time, that was hard. These days, you're just as likely to see someone cruising around this zone to find her, so beware, this is no easy feat. Number 2. The Violet Proto Drake You cannot get this today if you started now. Instead, what you can do is begin a journey towards one day getting this stunning recolor of the Proto Drake model. The Violet Proto Drake requires the meta achievements for every holiday event throughout the year. This means that a solid year of playing the game, and more importantly, a solid year of engaging with the game. Originally, it was a two year jolly, as one of the achievements required you to drink every drink in the Brew of the Month Club, requiring 12 months membership from the point of purchase. I, of course, started going for this seriously at Christmas, turning it into a 20 month slog, but the proof is in the pudding and the mount is more than worth it. These days, you only need to join that club, putting the grind at one year. The journey is actually quite fun, and a great way to engage with the game in a number of different ways, Something that you wouldn't be used to, a way to try achievements and things that are new. Number 1. The Black Market Auction House Gold Cap Mounts Last but not least, we're moving into the realm of cold hard cash, as there is a spectre looming over mount collectors. The Black Market Auction House is a Mists of Pandaria idea which has carried through ever since, giving you the chance to obtain previously unavailable mounts for the highest price. These include discontinued achievement and raid mounts, with most setting you back around 10 million gold, otherwise known as the Freaking Gold Cap. Thanks for watching this video, if you enjoyed hit subscribe and check out our other videos where we rank the 10 easiest mounts for a slightly less catatonic grind. Goodbye.